What up, y'all? It's your boy, Sid Lanis, checking in once again. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Okay, today we're going to be talking about Tim Scott. Uh, Tim Scott has endorsed Donald Trump. And he has faced mockery, uh, even maybe a little bit of you know, racism. But we're we going to break that down. We're going to draw a correlation between Tim Scott and Kamala Harris. Um a lot of people don't like the optics and the way that things look as far as Tim Scott supporting Donald Trump. They don't like the optics of it. But um, we need to get away from the optics a little bit. I understand the optics argument, but we also need to look at exactly what someone is is supporting. OK, now it says uh, Tim, uh, Tim Scott cries racism over liberal mockery of his Trump endorsement. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you're gushing support for an author authoritarian leader and this precarious democracy of ours here in the United States, you're likely to be met with a little mockery. It's a lesson Tim Scott is learning the hard way, and he's furious about it. And this is from MSNBC. Uh, Scott's obsequious praise for Donald Trump over the last week has earned widespread mockery, specifically video of him endorsing Trump with a preacher-style effect ahead of the New Hampshire primary, as well as video of Scott sliding up to Trump mid-speech to say, I just love you, after Trump has some unkind things to say about Nikki Haley. Both episodes have people clowning him online and in the press. During MSNBC's New Hampshire coverage, Joy Reid noted that Trump was using his victory speech to ritually humiliate people like Tim Scott. And Reverend Al Sharpton essentially said much the same thing on Morning Joe the next morning, uh, opinioning that it was humiliating to watch what Tim Scott did as a sitting senator. They're trying to make sure that any other minority who will think for themselves and consider the GOP, they want to send a message to Every single one of them step out of line and will attack you. This is what Tim Scott said. Uh, and then MSNBC says that's quite a war warped interpretation of what actually happened. Critics weren't taking issue with Scott for stepping out of line with liberals. They were mocking him for his cringeworthy fealty to Trump and his reluctance to challenge the former president, even as he suggested Scott must really hate Haley. Okay. So there you have it. And I think it's more of what Tim Scott is saying. Tim Scott is a black man. Tim Scott is supporting Donald Trump. And I think it's an easy target for MSNBC, the left, the liberals, the media, and, and even some black black folks. Um, well, a lot of black folks, are really, uh, look, well, some of them look at the optics, but they really look at it like he's tap dancing or whatever. But he's supporting Donald Trump. Okay. Now we're going to, we have to talk facts. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to Kamala Harris. Now remember, Kamala Harris is the current VP. Kamala Harris also ran against Joe Biden. Okay. Now, when she ran against Joe Biden, she called him out. And then she went and became a vice president for him. So let's look at this and let's see exactly what um, what was being said. Hold on. Got an advertisement. Yeah, so we're going to show you exactly what, what was said. And I think it's more appalling that Kamala Harris actually issue of supported race. him. Here I couldn't go. agree more that this is an issue that is still not being talked about truthfully and honestly. I, there is not a black man I know, be he a relative, a friend, or a co-worker who has not been the subject of some form of profiling or discrimination. Growing up, my sister and I had to deal with the neighbor who told us her parents couldn't play with us because, she, because we were black. And I will say also that, that in this campaign, we have also heard, and I'm going to now direct this at Vice President Biden, um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. Mm -hmm. But I also believe, and it is personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful, 
to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. It's a mischaracterization of my position across the board. I did not praise racist. That is not true. I was a public defender. I didn't become a prosecutor. I came out, I left a good law firm to become a public defender. When in fact, when in fact, when in fact my city was in flames because of the, the uh, assassination of Dr. King, number one. Now, number two, as the U.S., as, excuse me, as the uh, uh, Vice President of the United States, I work with a man who, in fact, we work very hard to see to it we dealt with these issues in a major, major way. Do you agree today, do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the second it, class to integrate Berkeley, it, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have the Voting Rights Act. And the need to pass the ERA because that, there are moments in history where states fail to preserve the civil rights of I all have people. I supported the okay, ERA yeah. from the very beginning when I ran for the So there you have it. So Joe Biden actually said that he didn't want his kids going to a, um, a racial jungle. And that's what he called it. He called busing what, what create these racial jungles in these schools. Um, and when he said praise racist, yeah, he worked a lot with Strom Thurmond in the Senate um, to write a lot of these crime bills. And Strom Thurmond is notoriously known as one of the most racist uh, politicians that's probably ever been in uh, Congress. Um, these are all true things, but I'm saying that to say that Kamala Harris went on to become Joe Biden's vice president. You see what I'm saying? Nobody called her out for her support of him. They just backed him. They just, I mean, they just backed her and supported her and supported that ticket. But what is worse to you? Is it the way that Tim Scott looks when he's supporting Donald Trump? Or it or is it the fact that Kamala Harris is now on the ticket as supporting a president who didn't even want her to be bused to a different school, who was pretty much looked at as a racist back in the day? Um, I would say back in the day, he, he wrote the crime bills that caused a lot of black males to get locked up. It caused a serious boom in uh, mass incarceration in the black community. And those things can be taken lightly. So I'm just going to ask you, if you're black, what would, make, what would make you support someone who wrote those crime bills with another person who we know is racist? Those crime bills were directly targeted to black people, especially black males. So if we're going to this Tim Scott, we can't have amnesia about Kamala Harris and what and what she did four years ago by supporting Joe Biden. Make sure y'all keep stay tuned in. Y'all keep God first. Y'all like, share, subscribe. This is Sad Linus with the morning show. Let's argue. I'm out. Peace.